Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Now he's going to go on and explain the consequences because at the end of the meal, just like at the end of the Last Supper, remember when Jesus had the Passover meal with his disciples, they get to take of the Lord's Supper, the, the communion. That's what we're going to do right now. In fact, could I have you guys pass out the uh, elements for the communion this morning? And we're going to look at what Paul says here as he explains to them. These guys actually, they would take communion with a real flippant attitude. I mean, just like it wasn't anything important. Just a, well, who cares? I'm all drunk and ate all this food and I'm stuffed and gluttoned out. And Oh yeah, we gotta have we got to have a bite of the Lord's Supper now. Paul says that there, there's a consequence. That many of these guys are going to be weak and fall sick and even some will die because they're going to they're, they're gonna take of the body and the blood of Christ in a manner that is, you know, like an unworthy manner, he calls it. Now, Paul is going to give us instructions that I like these instructions. Anyone here like to be judged? Could I get any volunteers? We'll just set you up front and judge you for whatever. We can pick on you, you know. I never get volunteers for this. What is wrong with you guys? No, we don't like being judged, do we? Anyone here would like to not be judged? Raise your hand. Pass on all judgment. You want no judgment, okay? Then I'm going to give you the secret from this passage. Paul tells specifically how to not be judged. And it's really simple. Let me show it to you here. In 1 Corinthians 11, Paul says here that... I'm going to skip over the part of the, of the communion elements until, we, until it's passed out. So let's just jump ahead. So verse 27, he says, Paul then says, Whoever eats of this bread or drinks of this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But a man, verse 28, must examine himself, and in so doing, he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself, if he does not judge the body rightly. For this reason, Paul said, there were many that were weak and sick and a number that even slept. That meant were dead. I'm not talking slip like fell asleep or permanent sleep, okay? He says, but, but if we judged ourselves rightly, then we will not be judged. If we judge ourselves rightly. He says, but, he says, when we are judged, we are disciplined by the Lord so that we will not be condemned along with the world. Now, so then, brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. And if anyone's hungry, let him eat at home, so that you will not come together for judgment. And the remaining manners I will arrange when I come. So Paul, Paul says, guys, there's only, the way to escape judgment is really easy. If we don't want to be judged, we, ha we, we actually have to judge ourselves. Not judge your neighbor, <laughs> not judge your boss, not judge your friend your spouse, you don't get to judge anyone else except for who? Yourself. And this is, this is something that when it comes to taking communion, I highly recommend before you ever partake of communion, you take a moment to reflect and say, Lord, help show me what I need to work on. Because he knows where you're at. He knows what your struggles are. You can't know him anyway. Don't, don't get deluded and think, oh, I could pull this one over on God. He doesn't know that I'm really struggling with this. You know, I'm a good godly Christian, but I want to kill that guy next to me. He's a jerk. You think God doesn't know that is going on in your heart? I'm not the only one raised Sicilian. He knows a few of us struggle. But if I'm going to not be judged by God, I have to call my sin what it is. Sin. I have to judge rightly myself. And the only way to escape judgment of God is call your sin what it is. You don't get to say, uh, soft pedal it and go, oh, but it's not really that bad. It's not as bad as that other guy. I'm certainly not as bad as Pastor Izzy. That ain't going to get you off the hook. Jesus said, if you look at someone 
with lust in your heart, what was it like? Like you committed adultery already. If you, if, you, if you think in your mind, you fool, raka in Hebrew, empty-headed, empty-headed. He said, that is, that's like judging them with a judgment guilty enough for condemnation, for, for, for death. You want the, the sentence of death passed on you because you, because Jesus is basically saying, you think, you just think of your brother, you fool. It's like you killed him. And you'll be tried as a murderer. Just hatred in your heart. That's murder. God's talking about the inner parts, man. I mean, down to the subtle, what we think, what goes on in here. And that's what I want you to do. Before we take this communion, I want you to go with me before God. I'm going to take a moment and ask the Lord to help each of us come before Him with our whole being. Here we are, Lord. Laid bare before you all the stuff, what we wrestle with, all, those, all the things that our flaws, and, and you need to call your flaws and your sin what it really is, sin. Because if you're going to get forgiveness for sin, you have to confess your sin. Jesus said, if you confess your sin, and Paul, I'm sorry, John wrote this in 1 John 1, 9. He said, if you confess your sin, God is faithful, and he's just, and he will forgive you your sin, and he will cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Now, anyone want to walk away clean today? Besides me, I'm going for this, man. I mean, this is the best part about communion. I get a, I get a retune up, you know, wipe the slate clean, get rid of all that junk, and just clean slate. But the only way to get the clean slate is to call my sin sin, and confess it. I don't need you to confess it out loud. I don't want to have to forgive you too. I want you to confess it to the Lord, okay? What what he, you, you can't hide it, but you need to tell him, Lord, forgive me for this. Forgive me, forgive me for that, what I was thinking over there, or, 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 or for the parts what I failed you in. The, just go to the Lord right now. Let's take a moment, and let's go before him, and, and, and then we'll read the, the part about taking of the bread and the, and the cup together from this passage, okay? Father, we just pray that your spirit would come and work in our hearts, our minds right now, deep into our souls, and, and bring those things to light, Lord, that that you want to shine your light on, Lord. Some of the dark corners of our hearts, some of the things, well, some of it's just way out there in the open. We see it already, Lord. We just bring you those things before your throne of grace. And we bring them before you to ask that you would forgive us, that you would cleanse us, that you would wash away all of these things, Lord, from our characters. We, we need you to, to make us wash clean as only you can wash. And we thank you for your son Jesus dying and spilling his blood and letting his body to be a sacrifice that we could be made whole and healthy in our spirit, in our minds, our bodies, all our being. Lord, we just come before you. Forgive us, Lord. If, we, if we're walking in pride or we're walking in ways of sin that, that are displeasing to you, Lord, we say forgive us. You see our, our steps, Lord. Guide us, lead us into the right way that we can walk pleasing before you. As we, as we enter this upcoming week, Lord, you know what lies ahead for us. We ask you just do your work in us now. Take a moment and confess your sin to the Lord right now. And now we turn to verse 23 of this chapter where Paul says, For I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Remember John, in John 15, he said that Jesus came and he was the bread of life, has come down from heaven to give us life. I always like to point out, where was the bread of life born? What, what city was it called? Bethlehem. And what is Beth in Hebrew? House and lay is of. And what was hem? Bread. 
The bread of life was born at a place called the house of bread. Just cryptic, you know, yeah. You think that was on purpose? But this bread that we're partaking, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks. And he broke it. So I want you to take that bread that you have and break it. And just to remember, his body was broken for you. Okay? He gave his body to be the sacrifice for us, that bread that has come down. And let's partake of this with thanksgiving for that life that he gives from, from him. Let's partake. Now verse 25 says, And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. He said, This cup is a cup of a new covenant in my blood. He said, Do this as often as you will. You can do this. And you can drink it as long as you drink it in remembrance of who? Of me, he said. As often as you eat this bread, you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You know that when we take of communion, we're proclaiming Christ died. Until he returns, this is the church's proclamation to the world. Christ, let his body be broken and his blood be shed so we can be forgiven. And that forgiveness is extended to everyone who wants it. Okay? All you have to do is confess your sin and call on the name of the Lord. The Bible says you'll be saved. So we invite you to, to, to join us in this if you're willing to call on his name. And if you, if you don't know this, I mean, sometimes people have to learn these things, you know. They don't know that all you have to do is call on Jesus. He'll save you. Don't make it overcomplicated, guys. He didn't. He said, just come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. I'll give you rest for your soul. There's some people really hurting and trudging through this life, and they don't know the one that gives them rest. But we do. So we take of this cup. To say, thank you for the life that was given to us. To wash away our sins and cover them, Lord. Well, not cover, remove. Thanks for removing our sin, we partake. To you, Lord. Lahaim. Lahaim in Hebrew means to life. In case you ever hear that as a uh, salutation, greeting, you know, they're, they're giving the, the, I can't think in English now. We say the salute in Italian when, when you toast a toast. When they toast the cup, you know, and they say Lahaim, cheers. cheers. Yeah, like cheers. But it's not cheers, it's to, to life. To life. And when we take of this, we're saying to the real life, the one that gave life to us. So it's a, it's a privilege to partake communion with you guys today as the end of this chapter. You know, this is something that for those of you, some of you don't, Maybe even think of this, you think, well, it's just something we get to do at church. But it says as often as you will. You could do this with your family when you're out to supper. You could have a, you know, you might be together around the table at a, a, a restaurant and say, ask the waiter, can you bring us a little bread and a little wine that we want to take of communion? And you, You're allowed to, as men, as the head of your house, you're, the, you're called the priest of your own home. Are you allowed to say, hey guys, let's remember what the Lord did? We're taking this meal. Let's just remember him. And I, I, I recommend you do this once in a while, not just at a church gathering, but as a family gathering. Because believe me, men, you might not realize it, but your kids are watching you. They're going to remember. My dad, we did this at church as a church, but my dad did it with us at home. And it'll have a great impact on your, on your children's faith. I just want to encourage you in that because in the early church, they didn't just save this for just this kind of setting when the church was gathered together. They did do it when the church was gathered together, but they even said went from house to house and they shared meals and they partook of the Lord's Supper. So they were proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes all over the community. I mean, if they're just like, hey, come on over, we're going to have a meal and we want to, we want to share something with you. You know, we, we, we found out Christ died for us and he shed his blood to forgive our sins. So we'd like to partake of that. We, ha, have you ever wanted his forgiveness? Because he, he's willing to give it to you. you can, it, if you ask him, you can join us. They're, you're proclaiming Christ died. Who's to say you're not allowed to do that? I know it takes a little boldness, but 
I sure be blessed if a couple of you guys could do this for me this week. Just have some folks over and, and just proclaim that Christ died. Till he comes, that's what we're supposed to do as a church. Now this is something Paul, Paul, ta Paul taught one thing here that gets read over all the time. It's verse 23. It's the first part of the verse. And it's probably the most important. I want to leave you with this thought that you can keep this in mind as you go through this next week. Paul the Apostle said, For that which I receive from the Lord is that which I deliver to you. And then he begins the message in the night which the Lord Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread. But most servants on communion start with in the night in which the Lord was betrayed. He took the bread. They skip the very first part of the verse, though. The verse starts with, for that which I received from who? From the Lord. Is that which I deliver to you. This is just for Jason and a fellow minister. Don't ever try to deliver something to others that God has not delivered to you first. Because effective ministry only happens when you are genuine and you share with people, this is what God has shown me. And if they go into all questions about all this other stuff and, and you don't know the answer, what's the best answer? I don't know about that, but what I do know, stick with what you do know. This is what the Lord gave to me. That's what he's shown me. Let me share with you what he's, I can only share with you what he's shown me. Well, what about this and what about that? You know, he hasn't really shown me anything about that, but I, but I can share with you what he has shown me. That which I have received from the Lord, that's what I deliver to you. I pray I never veer from that. I've learned that in my early, early days of my Christian faith. That is not about delivering to you guys some pie-in-the-sky thing that I learned, that I heard from some guy who heard from some guy who and, and And it didn't actually come from the Lord to me. I remember Pastor Chuck Smith used to say, if I share something with you guys and it, and it ministers to you, the Lord uses me as a vessel and it comes to you, you don't have to say that which Pastor Chuck told me that, I now tell you, he said, I just, the vessel God used, he's given it to you. It's yours. Now it's yours. You can say that which the Lord gave me, I give to you. And this week, when you, you by the way, you will encounter these circumstances where people are going to ask you questions about your faith. They're going to ask you some questions sometimes to just try to trip you up. What's the best answer on those questions? If you don't know the answer, I don't know the answer to that. But what I do know is Christ died for me. And he shed his blood for me. And we just celebrated communion to remind us of that. And I asked the Lord to forgive me. I feel, you know, I feel great. Because some of those people are wrestling with all of these other issues. They don't feel great in their spirit because they haven't experienced the forgiveness that you got to experience this morning. I love what J Pastor John Higgins taught me when he get done doing communion. He go, now I have something to tell all of you as we get ready to go into our week. How many, show of hands, how many of you asked the Lord to forgive you before you took communion this morning? Raise your hand. All right, good participation. He goes, I got something to tell you. Guess what? Your sins are forgiven. Not because he was proclaiming like he forgave you. He just said, just a word from my boss. <laughs> word from the sponsor. The sponsor. He forgives you. Now how good does it feel to start off your week knowing clean slate, you've been forgiven. Isn't that a nice way to just like kick off your week? You're like, got to go back to work, but... I, my sins are forgiven. And he would always tell me, don't forget to remind them. When they're going out the door, you know, you had communion, remind them how complete that work is that Christ does, that it is forgiven. Don't just send them on their way and not mention, hey, you know, just a reminder here that we did this. It's not just a tradition, a road, a ritual. It's actual cleansing. You guys got cleansed this morning. Turn to your new clean neighbor and say hello. They're all clean. I mean, you, you're around a bunch of clean, all washed clean Christians. This is a nice feeling. Now, don't be mean to each other. 
Love one another and don't sit in the parking lot as you're pulling away. <laughs> oh man, it's so weird how Christians act in the church setting and then when they leave. I've seen Christianity leave as soon as they get to the parking lot. <laughs> I thought you were a follower of Christ. I was until I got in my car and that jerk <laughs> behind me backed up. I'm on my way to lunch, don't they know I'm hungry? <laughs> Hang in there. I just want you to just experience that sweet, sweet peace that comes when you know you're forgiven. Isn't that a wonderful thing? David described that as the joy of his salvation. The joy that comes when you know God saved you and he cleansed you and he gives you his spirit. That's what you have to get to start off your week now. And as you go through this week, you mess up, go back to the Lord. Lord, forgive me. And just remember, I told you, His cleansing is complete. His washing is thorough. You just ask, you get a spot, so you get a spot. What do we do when we get a spot on our clothes during the week? Stuff happens, right? You clean it. And you move on. Some of you are going to get some spots on your soul. Go to the one who cleans it. Get cleaned up and keep going on. And just keep living for the Lord with his love and his peace in your heart. And be blessed this week. It'll be a good week if you do this. Not, not without trial. You'll have trials. It's just that you have the guy who's in charge of all the trials. And he says he won't let you go through anything without providing a way of escape for you. Not a single temptation will face you that he won't give you a way out. So be at peace. He's got you covered. Next week we'll continue. If you got a chance to read ahead into the next chapter, please do. And uh, if you got time to come out Tuesday night for the last part of Jude, I really highly recommend it. If you if you're facing any kind of spiritual battles, um, you know, in your in your daily walk, you might want to come out to see what uh, the wisdom the Lord gave through Jude. It, really powerful stuff. I know it's a short little short little books, twenty five verses. Um, only one chapter, but um, read that ahead if you get a chance. We already did the first half, and uh, and then we'll we'll do the last half this hopefully this Tuesday, and, and unless the Lord comes before then, that would be fine with me too. By the way, if I if I get interrupted in this sermon, I don't finish, and Jesus the trump blows, and the sky parts, and the Lord would that bum any of you out that you didn't have to drive home today? Just be caught up to meet the Lord. My son's like, we wouldn't have to pack up, Dad. That would be the way to go. <laughs> like, we all just get caught up to meet the Lord, and everyone's going, why are those tents on the beach? Where'd that church go? That's what that, now, that would be a great way to end a service, if you ask me. Hey, Lord, there's a cloud. You could come now. It says his coming will be in the clouds. I'm always like, you know, I, I hope, I pray. For this day, I know it's. I don't know the day and the hour. I never will tell you that I do. The scripture said, "No man knows that, only the Father." But it does say we know the signs of the times. Man, if you look at the signs Jesus described, do we have wars and rumors of wars and pestilence and famines and earthquakes and nation rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom? Do we have that happening today at all? No, that Korean guy, he's not against anyone, right? It, we have all the signs, and it makes me go, what's it say? When you see these things begin to come to pass, you should do what? Look up. Your redemption draws nigh. Let's don't forget our Redeemer is going to come back. We're only proclaiming this communion thing until he comes. After he comes, we get to have it anew with him in, in his kingdom. And I don't know how it's going to be, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty awesome. To have it anew. Do, has anyone else looked forward to this besides me? Looking forward to seeing what what is the new thing we're going to do with the Lord in His kingdom. Man, I get excited thinking about it. Just what great hope we have. Let's share that hope with others, okay? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the sweet promise it gives to us. And thank you for all your kindness, Lord. Beautiful day, holding back the reins. Lord, that we could meet out on the beach and just have a, a beautiful time together. Now we pray as we go from here forgiven and cleansed, Lord, by you, the work of your Son, that you would also pour out that great outpouring of, of your Spirit into each of us 
that we need, Lord. Equip us with the power of your Spirit, with the peace of your Spirit, for those that are mourning with the comfort of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I know that you know all of the, the circumstances each one is facing here. And the ones that will listen later, you know their circumstances. We pray that you would just meet each of them right where they're at and help them to, to receive what you have. Give us this day your daily portion, your daily bread for our soul. As we go from here, we just thank you that we can come to you, our God. Take us now safely and guided by your Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone that agree with me said... Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo, and God bless.